All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And tonight I've got something that has very, very much been anticipated by myself. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but since I heard rumors of it and then later confirmed the rumors were true, I have been waiting on this thing to show up for quite a while. And it is, it, it, it is a game changer for me, and I think it will be for a lot of you guys, uh, especially some of you that already have some equipment that you make and repurpose now beyond your wildest dreams. So uh, we're gonna get into that in just a second. So stick around. All right guys, so this is why I'm in such a good mood today. Believe it or not, it has arrived. And guys, I have been waiting on this thing uh, the folks over at Comgro told me they were working on one and had it in development. And of course, I, I really didn't know what the time frame was going to be on it, how long it was going to be. I do like my Z1 machine, but it is a 10 watt. And as you know, I do a lot of cutting and so forth. And so I needed a little more power at times. Uh, but the cool thing about this module, guys, before we get into putting it together and putting it on the machine, the cool thing about this this module is it fits every machine that I like in this shop. This will work with the X-Tool D1. This will work with the Otour Laser Master 2, Otour Laser Master 3, and the Comgro Z1. So it's, it's kind of like one size fits all. Now it does have some adapter cables and some different brackets and stuff like that for mounting. And it does run a separate power supply, kind of like the uh, X-Tool 20 watt upgrade that they sell but i don't care <laughs> i am ready to try this thing out uh, i had moved my z1 out of the enclosure because i've been using the otour and messing around with it and doing some testing with it but tonight i'm going to take the z1 we're going to get it back ready to go back in the enclosure and the first machine that i'm going to use it on is going to be the z1 because it is made by comgro and this is comgro gear so i'm going to put that z1 together put the module on it and we're gonna play with it, see what it'll do, make some cuts, and hopefully I'm gonna like it. I think I will. It looks a lot like a similar uh, laser head that you may, you may notice from the, from the case here. But the only thing is this thing is actually substantially larger than the module that it resembles. Uh, it does have the fixed shield, which I'm not sure how I feel about that right now. But if you notice, guys, the shield doesn't stick way down past the air assist. So even if the shield was shorter, it really wouldn't matter because you would be hitting the nozzle. So I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a big deal. Uh, but as far as the, the craftsmanship and the workmanship of this thing, it is clean looking. Air assist is built in. Uh, it does have the adjustment for if you're doing deep cuts, kind of like some of the other machines have to where you can adjust it up and down. Uh, so far, uh, it just, it, it looks like it's going to be what I want. Now, I just noticed that my little plastic lens here is not wanting to stay in. I may have missed something on that, but we'll just lay that over here to the side for now. But it has a, uh, the quick connect fitting for the airline, which this one is all metal. First time I've seen one of those on a machine. Uh, metal airline that goes across here, goes into the nozzle. The nozzle is significantly smaller than the nozzles that I have on the other machines. So I'm hoping that's going to mean it's going to leave me a little more depth. Uh, it does have the connections are on the side here. And you do have to have different cables depending on which machine you're running it on. But anyway, I am fixing to get my toolbox out, grab the Z1, get it set up on the table, and see what all goes into mounting this thing on the machine and getting it all. Uh, as you can see, this is a significant upgrade as far as the size of the module for this machine. Uh, so I'm sure there's gonna be some, uh, some obstacles to overcome, but I've got the manual out. We're gonna try to follow this thing and, and see how well this one's written. Uh, Comgro's been getting a little better about the, the, the installation instructions. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this will go well. So part one. Uh, looks like we're going to need a control box. We're going to need the little angled plate here. 
uh, M4 by 8 screws, uh, M4 by 8 screws times 3, uh, and T nuts times 2. Okay, so all the screws for this is in this one bag right here. That's easy enough. Some zip ties and a 3 millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, so simple enough. You know, lining these little T screws up can be challenging if you tighten one end down before you get the other one started. I've learned that lesson already. So we've already got it down to step three and step three is basically it says to piggyback this wire onto the existing wiring harness using some zip ties. That is there. So I know during this process I'm going to have to take this off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So the next step is the laser assembly. Significantly, <laughs> significantly more uh, slack at the bottom, but it looks as though it's still going to be more than adequate. So I think I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, little locking mechanism here out. And one cool thing about this one is, is it does give you several different places that you can put it. So I'm gonna go up with the, not the bottom one, but up from the bottom just a little. As long as I've got a good range of motion, which I think I will right there. I think I can go plenty down and I think I can come plenty up right there. So that's plenty of range of movement. I can always, if I'm using a rotary or whatever, I can always uh, change something up if I need to. So air hose obviously goes here uh not too sure not too sure i like the placement of that on this particular machine because the standoff over here isn't uh as much as it is on some so we'll have to see how that works out that that has potential to be a problem but i'm hoping it won't be uh, and now i have my cable here. Uh, this main cable plugs into the side of the module and then it's got this notch here that holds it. Alright, so this little adapter has to snap in here first. So you will be using the yellow and blue PMW marked wire. And it says that in the directions. Just make sure you read that carefully. Because I about I about got confused there. Uh, so for all practical purposes, guys, uh, this thing should be ready to fire up. So before I put it in the enclosure and, you know, take a chance on having to pull it back out of the enclosure because I did something wrong, I'm going to go ahead and power this guy up right here and get my long USB cable out. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, throw down a work surface and test it out right here where you guys can see it a little better and see what this thing's made of. All right, guys, I got the machine plugged up and got it connected to my computer. And in the process, of course, uh, the machine was homing. And I found one critical issue that Comgro overlooked on this build. And that is this screw that you use to adjust it. When I'm trying to home it, the screw is hitting the wall of the machine before hitting the limit switch. So the limit switch is not able to stop the machine. So I'm gonna take this screw out that adjusts the module and just test and see if the range of movement is gonna let, let this, the homing switches work, I mean, I don't think <laughs> I, I, I don't think this is going to be the only problem after looking at it. Uh, there's where the limit switch hits right there. Uh, so if I put this module here, limit switch still is not hitting, even even with the the, the screw out. So that's going to be an issue, guys. Not a fan of that. Not a fan at all. That's one of the things I like about this machine is the limit switches. 
so where do we go from here, guys? Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it may end up on a different machine. I, I wonder if my other machines will have this same issue. The ComGrow, I have noticed because of the way their air assist is made and the way that uh, the, the, the bracket is, I have noticed that the frame probably should have been extended just a little ways. Uh, because just like right here, uh, yeah, that nozzle is going to hit a good bit before the machine makes it to that location of the maximum workspace. All right. Not sure what I'm going to do from this point forward, uh, but before I disassemble this thing, I at least want to see it work. Uh, I, I, I may end up having to put it on one of the other machines uh, due to it hitting the sides, but it is usable in this uh, configuration uh, because I think maybe ComGrow didn't take into consideration that a lot of us use light burn, a lot of us do the home, but even, even with the app, uh, it hitting the side before the limit switch is tripped is gonna be an, is gonna be an issue. I'm gonna improvise. All right, guys, I decided to go back and take a peek at the book and just make sure I didn't overlook something, uh, but I didn't. Uh, everything has apparently been done the way that it uh, was supposed to be. So I think we're good on that. It's just this module, this frame was not built with the expectations of this module. So there's gonna be some adjustments they're gonna have to make before I'm gonna be completely content with the way this thing operates. But I did manage to power the machine up and just standing here watching it, I homed it and then tricked it into believing that it made it all the way home using the limit switches. And I've pushed it back out to the center of the workspace and I've got a burn in. And I'm just gonna check the, the output of this thing before I start disassembling it and trying other stuff. I'm gonna see exactly if it performs as I believe a 20 watt should. So I'm gonna set this cut to uh, seven millimeters per second at 100% output at one pass. And I do know that my other 20 watt, typically I can get a drop on this power setting uh, on decent wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and see what happens. This is just gonna be a circle and I, I made it kind of big just so that you can actually see the cut as it goes through. I don't have an air assist pump hooked up to it right now, nor do I have any ventilation on it. Uh, I said I just wanted to test it out and see how well the, the module performed as far as a 20 watt module goes. Okay, so that's a drop. Uh, I do have it set to do the 1-1 one, one return, so it looks as though, I heard it bump a little bit, but it looks as though that didn't hurt anything. So the size of this module is definitely going to take some adjustments, but that was a, a one pass drop at seven millimeters per second. So I'm going to run it out here and do another one. But this time I'm gonna move it up to eight millimeters per second because that's typically where my other 20 watt starts having issues is it's around eight millimeters per second. So I'm gonna run it at eight and see what happens. Now I did have a little issue with that little piece of glass. Uh, I got to looking at it and I think when I picked the module up, I think I pressed a little too hard on the inside of the glass and uh, the, it looked like it just had some glue holding it in and that little piece of glass window had fell out. So that uh, may not necessarily be on Congro there. That may have been me just being a little overpowered with it. So that's what I got. And that's about the same as I normally get with my other 20 is just get the little small snag. So that's not bad, eight millimeters per second on 4.5 millimeter material. So I'm gonna slide this workpiece over and I'm gonna run that same burn, but I'm gonna crank it on up to uh, 
about 10 millimeters per second this time and see if we can get it to uh, not come out at all. See if I can kind of keep this guy from being a burn through. And this is with no air assist too, guys. So that is a, that is a bit of a handicap, me not running it with air assist right now. I've got a compressor that I could put on there. Yeah, so at 10 millimeters a second, it's starting to get a little sketchy as far as it, it's, it's, it's cutting in places, but not in others. But that's, that's typical of what I see with a 20 watt diode on this material. So it's performing as well as I would expect a 20 watt to. All right, guys, so for my Z1, I'm kind of mixed. Uh, the module performs as it should. The 20 watt power is definitely there. Uh, it is more just as capable of, as my other 20 watt machine as far as cutting ability and the power output of the module. I'm a little disappointed by the fact that it, 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 the chassis itself is not accommodating the larger module any better than what it is. Uh, I know that, you know, with a 20 watt module, it's going to be bigger, uh, but I got to have my limit switches on this machine. Uh, I don't feel comfortable running it without it because if you, you, if you forget to home or even like with this one, I can't even home it. So not being able to home it, not being able to have it to the return to stuff is a little bit of a letdown for me. Now, I've got other machines. They say this thing will work on other machines. I do intend on trying it on other machines. All right, guys, I think this is going to end up being where I'm going to land with this module, the way it looks. I'm just going to throw that out there. I love the speed of this Autour. All right, it is, uh, it is, it has got to be the fastest machine that I have in the shop when it comes to transit speed. The only thing that I, that, that I, that I prefer about some of my other machines is this is only a 10 watt output module. If you look at the way this machine is built, it has a lot more standoff. The bracket that holds the head has a lot more room. So guys, I'm thinking that this may end up being the way I need to go with this. All right guys, uh, after a few minutes of frustration, I decided that I would go ahead and uh, move this module over but I kind of did a little rough install. I haven't got everything put on here uh, because after looking at the machine, the, the dimensions of the module, the way the Autour works, I'm going to be honest with you guys, this thing is far more suitable for the Autour than it is for the Z1. The Autour does use, it doesn't use uh, hard limit switches. So in essence, is it, it, when this hits the frame, the machine senses that it stops, it backs up. So it's a lot less possibility of having a, a, an issue using this chassis as opposed to the Z1. Now, I burned through a whole bunch of zip ties a while ago because I had to cut every zip tie that I used to get this thing off. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw just a few zip ties on here just to get the cable management to where I can try some burns with this thing on the uh, Autour and then we'll go from there. All right guys, cost me a few more uh, zip ties, but I managed to get everything kind of situated. Uh, the one thing that I did do is I put my parts back in the box, of course, for the Autour so that I don't, uh, so that I don't lose those guys. In the, in the event that I take this off, I want to be able to go back with the uh, original module, which I'll be placing in the box that came with the new 20 watt module and guys i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> looking at this thing the color of it everything all things considered i'm pretty sure this was the intended target for this uh in the market uh so i've got everything connected I, i've got most of my zip ties in place uh never mind my air assist cord i went ahead and put me another hose on here and got the air assist up and going uh, so that I could uh, move forward with my, my testing. So I'm gonna get some wood out and we're gonna play with this machine once again and just see how it does on the Ortur. 
Uh, I am using my Ortur cutting space as well. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over the work area, flip the little leg right here, the little blade leg down, uh, and set the focus on this guy. Go ahead and lock it in place. Flip the little leg back up. Everything should be powered up and power up the module. If I've got it plugged in, let me double check that. I unplugged everything when I was working on it, so. There we go. Module's powered up. Uh, everything appears okay. So I'm gonna go over here to my machine, and I don't have a USB cable on this one, guys, because the Otour is Wi-Fi controllable using Lightburn. So I'm gonna go ahead and home it, and let's see how it does with the home here. Well, let me connect it first. There we go. The only problem that I've seen so far is if it contacts this material on the front of the machine first, it will not go all the way to the side here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it back up there. That way I can home it and it'll already hit this side and then it's just gonna move down until it touches and then it's gonna stand off. It's gonna retouch, stand off and it's ready to go. That's a lot better than the Com Grow. The Com Grow, if you did that, there was a whole lot of gears growling and a lot of noise, which is not good. So I'm gonna run this thing out. I've still got that cut set to seven millimeters a second. I'm just gonna frame it with the Artur and see what we got. All right, I'll go ahead and send this thing. Now, I will say this, with the speed of the Artur, and the power of a 20 watt, guys, this is gonna be unreal. I've currently got it set at five and 395, so I'm gonna change that to 10 and 390, which will be up in that back corner back there. But hopefully it'll keep it off the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. And we'll see if, see if I get that bump this time. Maybe I won't, uh, since I've got it standing off a little further. Yeah, there we go. No bump that time. Uh, but that's one, one cut drops. Uh, I'm going to test something out with this machine because the, the one thing about the Otor that I have noticed is this thing is blazing fast. So I'm going to put a graphic in the workspace and go ahead and frame that out. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. This is a, this is an, is an engraved and I'm running it on, uh, let me change that. That may be a little hot for, well, no, 20 watts should be okay. I'm gonna run this on 100 and 100 and uh, we'll see how she does uh, doing some, a lot of traveling. Make sure it doesn't cause any kind of backlash issues. Like I said, the Otor is by far the fastest <laughs> machine I've got. Uh, this thing moves so fast that if you if you blink, you'll miss it. Uh, like I said, overlook my air assist hose, guys. I just kind of twisted that thing up and stuck it in there so it would be out of the way and hoping it wouldn't get tangled up. Uh, but I think this is going to be my configuration with the 20-watt module from ComGrow. I know it's made by ComGrow, but it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't seem as well suited for the Z1 as it is for the Artur. Uh, the size of the module actually fills in the bed space of the Artur better than the module it comes with. And having 20 watts of power with the speed of this machine, with the two combined, guys, it's going to rival, it's going to rival my primary machine as far as the speed that I can turn out projects now. I mean, this thing is fast. So I'm just going to let you kind of watch that run for a minute. Let me go ahead and just kind of try to get this back here out of the way. Make it look a little cleaner. All right, guys. It doesn't look like I'm getting any backlash. The engrave is really deep. It's nice and colored. I don't see any, I don't see any over travel on there anywhere from the added weight. That was my only concern was that that added weight of the laser head was going to cause me to have a little bit of over travel. 
during the, uh, the process because that machine is so fast and I added so much weight to the gantry. But doesn't appear to be causing a problem at all. This machine is now, if it was already a, a really, really, really good machine. But guys, we've made this thing into a great machine. All right, one more time. I'm going to home it just to show you how this machine responds differently than the Congro. Uh, and if you use a return to location, especially, it's already going to be on this side. It's, this machine uses more of a electrical based uh, limit switch setup. It doesn't actually have physical limit switches. So that helps because anytime it runs into something, if it gets enough resistance, It'll, it'll, it'll kill the power to the, to the steppers and sets it back out. So even with this module, even though it is technically too big to fit here, it is able to stop when it hits the rail and it considers that to be its new home location. So although that is not perfect in a perfect world, that is definitely usable. Uh, I can send this thing out uh, I'm going to go ahead and run me a square around that design that I just did and do a cut on it right quick just to, just to kind of show you guys as far as the ability of the machine to cut. I'm just going to turn off the engrave. I'm going to leave the cut at 7 millimeters per second and 100% output. And now I may cut out some of my circles. I'm just doing this for uh, demonstrative purposes only, guys. But I will be putting the uh, Artur back in the enclosure now. I've got my jig set up in there. Uh, everything's running. So unfortunately, it, 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 it looks like the Artur won the, uh, the competition to be my number two machine. And ironically, Comgro was responsible for helping it beat out my Z1 because now I have a machine with the speed of the Otour Laser Master 3, which is unrivaled in my shop, and the power of an X-Tool D1 20 watt. So it's, it's hard to beat that, guys. It is really hard to beat that in a diode laser. I, I, I'm, I, am, I am impressed with this module. I'm impressed with the fit on the Otour and the fact that even, it, all the functions still work. If this thing hits the wall with the Artur, it's not gonna be as big of an issue because it will stop itself and not cause any problems. Now, it kinda of snatched my cable up that time and got my cable in the way, and my hose in the way, but when I get it back into the uh, enclosure, that should no longer be a problem. So, that's gonna be my, uh, my setup for now, guys. It's a win we've got a winner for the uh, secondary enclosure. All right guys, I hope y'all enjoyed tonight as much as I did because I have been waiting ever since I talk, spoke to my friends over at Comgro and they told me they had a 20 watt in development. I have been anxiously awaiting this thing. Uh, I was kind of hoping it would work with my Z1, but, and, and it will, it will work with the Z1, but you're gonna lose the limit switches and if, if you don't, uh, set the machine up and run it as if it didn't have limit switches, you're going to run into some trouble hitting the wall. Uh, you're going to get that awful grinding, belt slippage, the whole nine yards where it just it's like nails on a chalkboard. So that is a concern. So if you do put this on a Z1, unless they've changed the newer Z1s or maybe I've got an older one, uh, the Z1s will have issue with it due to the, the, the added size and it limiting the activation of the limit switches. Now I'm sure Comgro is going to get on that and I'm sure it won't be long that they'll have either a modified chassis out or maybe some type of adaptation that will you know you can put on there and it'll extend the the reach of those limit switches. Now just like with the D1s you're going to lose uh, some workspace because the module is larger it does take up more room and you're going to lose a little workspace. A 20 watt D1 actually has a little bit less workspace than a 10 watt D1 due to the fact of the module size. So that is to be expected. I wouldn't expect any other, any other way. The only way 
that uh, you could do that is if X-Tool had have enlarged the chassis or if any of these ledger manufacturers, they would have to enlarge the chassis of the machine to allow for the added girth of the module. And in doing so, that would maintain the, the same workspace. But this machine has adequate workspace anyway. Uh, with the addition of this module, it is gonna cut me down a few millimeters each side, but it is still well within the range of what I need to do, what I do as far as my work. So I'm very happy with it. And so far, I was a little concerned with the Ortur. Uh, I was a little afraid that it was either A, gonna trip the motion sensors in the machine because this machine does have motion sensors. And when that, when that added weight on that gantry is going so fast back and forth, I was afraid it was gonna cause the machine to move. But even sitting on my table with nothing but the rubber feet contacting the table, no way of stabilizing it, I didn't have that problem. I didn't have any whiplash showing on the, uh, on the burn. Everything looked good. So once I, get, once I get into the enclosure to where the feet are actually captured in my jig kit and I have the, uh, the honeycomb and the air assist and everything on it, this thing is going to be a beast. And uh, I'll try to get around to doing some more videos with it this week, but I've got a lot of jobs coming up that I've got to get done because of Christmas. But I could not turn down the opportunity to go ahead and get this thing out there and let you guys see it because I know there's a lot of you that are kind of on the fence of what machines to get. And uh, I'm going to be honest with you, this combination of this chassis and this diode uh, module, unless there's some problems that come up in the future, so far I'm really digging this thing. So if you like the video, guys, be sure to hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you got any comments, concerns, or questions, drop those down below, and I'll try to get to them when I can and answer those. Uh, if you do want to message me directly, as always, go to the Facebook page. It's a lot easier. Uh, people try to use my Etsy to message me. They try to use, you know, dropping comments on top of comments. And the, the YouTube's interface does not make it great. If you reply to a comment, uh, it, it makes it kind of hard for me to find sometimes. So it's best to go to Facebook, go ahead and follow my page, like my page, and send me a message from there. As always, thanks for stopping by. I'm going to be playing with this thing a little more. I'll get back with you if any kind of issues or anything come up. I'll be able to. I'll be uh, sure to include that in a future uh, video. So if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for stopping by. Be safe and have a good day.